Hi all. I'm in my backyard with my beautiful young ladies that are growing up very nicely. Love and care. Speaking of love and care, I want to talk about what we are so we can love and care for ourselves and for our families and our friends and our community better by understanding some very fundamental things really about what we are and what getting high is. So those of you who have followed my perspective, which is based on far from equilibrium thermodynamics, life is created by flowing energy because flowing energy creates organization. And as chemical organization led to biotic organization and evolution led to us being able to, as chemical flow dependent chemical structures speak to each other, What's really going on when we consume cannabis and what is getting high and how does it, it relate to our very being? So as I have explained on numerous occasions, the electron transport system is a way of producing energy efficiently. It's also dangerous because it leaks free radicals if we overload it by eating too much or not sort of pulling on the other end by exercising enough. So what I want to really talk about is how that electron transport system and its functioning efficiency has some unique characteristics uh, that have manifested itself in our the development of the vertebrate brain. So again, from my perspective, what the CB1 receptor does when it's on mitochondria in particular, because it's found not only on the cell membranes, but it's also meaning the external cell membranes, but it's also on mitochondrial membranes. And the mitochondria being this nuclear reactor that can be good or bad, depending on whether it's leaking radiation, in this case in the form of free radicals. Um, by, a, by being able to fine tune that nuclear reactor, you can, can keep it from spitting out too many free radicals. And that's what the CB1 receptor is doing. And because of its ability to fine tune free radical production, and because free radical production is the fundamental quality, the fundamental characteristic of homeostasis. Everything comes from flowing energy, and free radicals are the thing that monitors basically the health of the homeostatic dynamic system, which is what we are. So we want to make free radicals because that's what tells us constantly on all levels of organization how to adapt. And on the other hand, an excess becomes stressful, be it within a cell causing damage to DNA, fats, proteins, etc., or whether it be on a higher level of organization where the stress affects our brain in a direct fashion, being at the heart of so many illnesses, especially mental illnesses, uh, because of how stress basically decreases organization. But that's another topic, so I don't get too off base here. So where I'm going with this, if you followed my DNA story, you know that DNA is a record of metabolism. And that prebiotic soup was really the setup for transformation into life by virtue of prebiotic chemistry that became biotic chemistry once the far from equilibrium phase change occurred that became life and subsequently phase changes that led to the very speciation. And what we've seen always is an increase in CB1 receptor in the brain of vertebrates as the brain grows in complexity. And that's because of how it fine tunes our energy source. So it's absolutely essential that it be there as the complexity which is manifest in the evolving brain continues. So we are metabolism and our CB1 and our CB2 receptors monitor metabolism. They harmonize in a way to optimize our ability to do things and to be by balancing the free radical signaling uh, and the free radical production with biological harmony so that we minimize any excess free radical production, which is what ultimately causes the decrease in the system, be it a cell or an organism, or equivalently really, but that's again another topic, a society. So what I'm trying to say here 
is that when we get high, it allows our brain to function more efficiently. That buzz is your brain working more efficiently. And the more you know that and use that to enhance your brain function and your overall capacity, uh, the more you become you. Because you are metabolism. We are all only metabolism. So what we have here, what I'm driving at, is our most fundamental human right the fundamental right of any living creature with enough consciousness to know it has that right, is metabolic freedom. If it's in fact the metabolism that creates the DNA and the metabolism responding to its environment that changes the DNA in a directed fashion, as I'm proposing, well then, of course, it's, a, it's the most fundamental human right. We are our metabolism. The senses that come in via our sensory system, our nervous system, or the mass that comes in and is monitored by our immune system, those two fundamental systems of our body are monitoring and allowing us to adapt with the outside. And we all know how fundamental the cannabinoid system is. I mean, of course, the idiots in the conventional way of thinking that, oh, CB1 receptor, immunological receptor. That's nonsense. CB1 receptor turns on fat burning, and fat burning is a fundamental property. As a cell differentiates and becomes things, there are different pathways depending on whether they're guided by a more aggressive biochemistry, like sugar burning, or whether they become a more passive biochemistry, like fat burning. And we see that in the differentiation between, for example, M1 and M2 macrophage. It starts in their metabolism and manifests in their activity. So we, as living organisms, have the most fundamental right to metabolic manipulation as we choose to see fit because that's what we're here for. We're here to adapt, and it's our metabolism that allows us to adapt, and our consciousness should be in sync with that truth whereby we utilize our consciousness to explore and manipulate our health by manipulating our metabolism. Bye.